Now, we know that this is a very, very difficult concept to understand. You know why? Because it's even more, you know, the early Christians had a very hard time understanding that God became man. They could not, they could not imagine how Jesus Christ could be God. Why? Because his divinity is hidden in his humanity. He's just like us. But in the Eucharist, it is even more difficult for us to believe in it because not only the divinity of Jesus Christ is hidden in the Eucharist, even the humanity of Jesus Christ is hidden in the Eucharist. That's why up to now, there are, among our Protestant brothers and sisters, they, hardly any one of them ever believed that this is the act of flesh and blood of Jesus. So let's ex we will now examine a biblical basis for the teaching on the Eucharist. Is it in the Bible that this is really the flesh and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? So if you have your Bible with you, please turn it to John chapter 6. Okay, John chapter 6. You know, John chapter 6 started out with the teaching that on faith. Okay. It started out with the um, two of the greatest miracles performed by our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the multiplication of the loaves. Remember that? Uh, there were crowds that followed Jesus Christ and they were all hungry and uh, they had nothing to eat and they only had about five pieces of bread and five pieces of, of fish. But Jesus Christ was able to multiply the, this uh, bread and, and the fish into thousands and everybody was fed. And there was even, uh, there even remained about 12 baskets of uh, fish and bread. So this is actually preparing us to understand what is to be the future Eucharist that will be made available to us. It will be available to every single individual in the world if they want it. The superabundance of the flesh and blood will be available to everybody and it will not be divided. And then another, another miracle before the teaching was given was uh, when Peter saw Jesus Christ walking on the water in the midst of a big storm. So, when he saw Jesus Christ, he said, uh, Oh, Lord, let me, let me walk on the water just like you. And, and Jesus Christ said, Okay, come. And when he started walking, he was able to walk on the water for a while. But then he lost his focus on Jesus and started focusing on the storms around him. And he started sinking. And Jesus had, uh, and started sinking. And so he asked for help and Jesus uh, got hold of him and said, you of little faith. So it's very important. Now, in these two incidents about the miracles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that a lot of faith is about to be required in the teaching that he would be giving. And so he gave the teaching in verse 48 and 51 of John chapter 6. Verse 48 reads, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And then verse 1. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. That's the very word of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And when he gave this teaching the hearers understood that he was speaking about this flesh in the literal sense. Why? Why did we say that they really understood this as being said in the literal sense? Because they started complaining among themselves. In paragraph 52, the Jews quarreled among themselves saying, How can this man give us his flesh to it? You know, if, if they thought that Jesus Christ was teaching them only literally, then they would not even question that. But they said, but they understood that he was speaking literally. So they said, how, how can 
this man give us flesh to eat? And then in verse, uh, another verse, in, ver uh, in John 6, verse 68, many of his disciples who were then listening said, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? So they were really complaining. And then finally in verse 66, as a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. So they walk away. They walk away. But did, but did Jesus Christ correct them? No. He did they say, hey, don't walk away now. You just misunderstood me. I'm just speaking symbolically. Now this is the only time, and for the first time, that the, the, his hearers left him for doctrinal reasons. Because they didn't like the teaching. And then when they and they walk away, he Jesus Christ even turned to the twelve apostles who were who, who remained. And he asked them, he even challenged them, Do you also want to live? In verse 68. Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of life. See? So instead of correcting them, Jesus Christ even repeated his teaching six times in six verses in John 6. Jesus said to them, there verse 53, Amen, Amen, I say to you. You know when Jesus Christ says, Amen, Amen, what, is this, what was he actually saying? He was emphasizing, yes indeed. Yes indeed. You're right, you're right. Amen, Amen, I say to you. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you do not have life within you. And he used the word pago for the word eat. It's just a, a generic word for eat. And then, in order to even emphasize it, in the next verse he said, whoever eats, and the word eat now, in the word eat now he used the word trogo in Greek, which means you gnaw, you chew, to emphasize that this is real eating of the flesh. He said, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh, over and over, is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. So, six times in six verses, instead of correcting them about, probably they thought that uh, they, he, he, he was just being misunderstood, he affirmed that this is really his flesh. Okay. So, this is to be taken in the literal sense. You know, the problem, uh, most, most of our Protestant brothers and sisters, uh, especially the fundamentalists, are very... What, what, what do you call it? They are literalists when it comes to interpretation of the scripture. But when it comes to John 6, almost all of them just flip flop and would not interpret John chapter 6 literally, but rather just symbolically. And it just doesn't make sense. Because the expression to eat and drink in the Jewish culture actually means that means to assault, to persecute. Jesus Christ could not have said, you assault me, you persecute me, and you will have, and, and, and you're going to live forever. He could not have meant it that way. So it just didn't make any sense. Besides, even in the uh, epistles of St. Paul, he made very clear warnings about not, honest, not uh, appreciating this this bread and wine as the body, the real body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 27, Therefore whoever eats or eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. So there is even a requirement for you to be really fully prepared to receive the body and blood of our Lord. And if you are receiving it unworthily, you are answering.
answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. And that means you would be guilty of murdering yourself, of killing him. And then in verse 28 you said, a person should examine himself and so eat the bread and, and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. So that was his warning to his people then. If you do not discern that this is really the flesh and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you partake of it, then you are really <clears throat> drinking and eating judgment on yourself. So this teaching has to be taken really seriously. You know, uh, many times also when Jesus Christ uh, was teaching his disciples, he would be misunderstood.